Who is the Grand Inquisitor? Was he a temple guard or was he someone else? Hey YouTube, this is Urban Acolyte TV and my name is Prince. Last week, Mitch over at the Dash Star channel released this really awesome video on the identity of the Grand Inquisitor from season one of Star Wars Rebels. The Grand Inquisitor has been receiving a lot of attention lately because there's a group of people who believe that the Grand Inquisitor is actually Supreme Leader Snoke. Anyway, the Dash Star video takes a statement that Dave Filoni made on an episode of Rebels Recon about us possibly seeing the Grand Inquisitor during the Clone Wars series, but not knowing it. Dash Star looked into that statement before he gave his speculation about the Grand Inquisitor's previous identity during the Clone Wars. Now, I highly encourage you to check out the video on the Dash Star channel, but I'm going to give you a quick rundown of what he had to say. So his argument begins with the question of who could the Grand Inquisitor be in the Clone Wars when we don't know his identity? This prompted the question of, well, what if we saw the Inquisitor and couldn't know it because we couldn't see his face? So Dash concludes that the Grand Inquisitor was wearing a mask, a mask worn by the Jedi Temple Guards. Now this makes sense because Temple Guards and Inquisitors have the shared use of a double-bladed lightsaber. Also, because we don't see the Temple Guards fighting or defending the Jedi Temple during Order 66, it is possible that Palpatine could have corrupted the Temple Guards. Dash goes on to mention the similarities between the Temple Guards uniform seen during the mid-season trailer and the current uniform worn by the Inquisitors. He speculates on how some of the Temple Guards could have fallen to the dark side, become Inquisitors, and may later become the original Knights of Ren. Now, I'm not going to get into a discussion of whether or not the Inquisitors do become the Knights of Ren, but I would like to further engage this speculation about the identity of the Grand Inquisitor. Let's take another look at that statement from Dave Filoni. He said it's not the first time we've ever seen him. He was in the Clone Wars, but you just didn't know it. The Grand Inquisitor's race is Powin, and he most likely comes from the planet Utapau. Originally, Dash looked into old Clone Wars episodes to see if any events occurred on Utapau or involved any Powins. When he did not find any episodes involving Powins or their homeworld, he then began to speculate that the Grand Inquisitor must have been someone who concealed their identity. Here's something interesting. As it turns out, there was a Clone Wars storyline that occurred on Utapau. It was one of the storyboard episodes later released after Disney acquired Lucasfilms. Although the episodes were never fully completed and released in their final versions, they are viewable on the Star Wars website. In the four-part series, Crystal Crisis, it begins with Anakin and Obi-Wan traveling to Utapau to investigate the death of Jedi Master Tuan. Jedi Master Tuan was assassinated while investigating a Separatist conspiracy. What Skywalker and Kenobi learned was that General Grievous and Count Dooku were working with a group that even included the governor, Toro Blum, and the police inspector, Jin Jun, in order to acquire an extremely large kyber crystal. Because this is nearing the conclusion of the Clone Wars, it is safe to assume that Darth Sidious has his Separatist forces looking for kyber crystals because they've already begun construction on the Death Star. Something that stood out to me is that here, two major events towards the conclusion of the Clone Wars, and they both occur on Utapau. The first being this secret involvement with the Separatist forces to obtain a kyber crystal. The second event is the meeting of the Separatist forces at the end of the Clone Wars, when Obi-Wan defeated General Grievous. Now, I will admit that when I first saw Governor Toro Blum's discomfort with the Jedi conducting their investigation, I immediately thought that he might be the Grand Inquisitor. 
Perhaps he was already training with Count Dooku and he was nervous about trying to conceal his alternate identity. This idea was quickly dashed by General Grievous when he impaled the governor with his lightsaber after the Jedi managed to escape from their custody. Because Grievous later returned to Utapau with the rest of the Separatist leaders, I'm led to believe that he and Count Dooku had a contact or several contacts already on the planet in addition to the governor and the police inspector. I want to go farther with this, but first let's look at some quick information about the Grand Inquisitor. According to Wikipedia, the Grand Inquisitor was born 47 years before the Battle of Yavin. This would put him at around 42 or 43 when Kanan defeats him in the finale of Star Wars Rebel Season 1. He would have been about 27 at the end of the Clone Wars. Now Dave Filoni says that we will be learning more about the Inquisitorius towards the end of Season 2 on Rebels. But right now we don't have any idea as to how long the Grand Inquisitor had been in his position as leader and as the person responsible for training and teaching the other Inquisitors. Furthermore, we don't actually know who trained the Grand Inquisitor. I want you to hold on to the thought of who may have trained the Grand Inquisitor and how long he'd been training as an Inquisitor, because this will be important for a point that I am about to make. Earlier I mentioned that I thought that the Grand Inquisitor might have been Governor Toro Blum. When the Jedi arrive on Utapau, we see several shots of other Powans walking around the landing pad, along with people serving as some sort of security detail. Now I agree with Dash's theory that the Grand Inquisitor is possibly someone we see who is covered. The Powan police or security forces dress in ceremonial robes and they wear a head covering that keeps their faces concealed. I think it's highly probable that one of these guys covered may be the Grand Inquisitor. Now recall that I mentioned these two episodes that occur on Utapau. The investigation towards the end of the Clone Wars over this kyber crystal and later the occupation on Utapau at the end of the Clone Wars where Obi-Wan travels to Utapau in Revenge of the Sith. I think that there was a faction loyal to Darth Sidious who worked with Count Dooku and General Grievous. Now recall where I said that we don't quite know who trained the Grand Inquisitor and how long he'd been training because this is where my speculation could fall flat. I think that the Grand Inquisitor was trained by Count Dooku. In Dash's theory, he believed that the Grand Inquisitor may have been one of the Temple Guards because of the shared use of the dual-bladed lightsaber. But when you pay attention to the Grand Inquisitor's fighting style, he doesn't fight like someone welding a lightsaber staff. I would expect the Inquisitors to use Form 7, and their fighting style should look more like how Darth Maul fights in The Phantom Menace. After I attended a lightsaber choreography workshop taught by my friend Guru Jerome Teague last weekend, I'm beginning to pay more attention to lightsaber fight scenes, especially the fighting styles used. What I have observed is that although the Inquisitors all carry the double-bladed spinning saber, they all have different fighting styles. If you pay close attention, the Grand Inquisitor actually uses more of a fencing style seen in Form 2. The reason I mention that I think the Grand Inquisitor was trained by Count Dooku is because Count Dooku is an expert with Form 2. As a matter of fact, he taught Form 2 to Asajj Ventress and she adapted it to be used with two lightsabers so that she could face more opponents. Ventress had a locking mechanism on her lightsabers which allowed her to use them as a double-bladed lightsaber. But I think she was still using Form 2 even with the altered weapon. The reason I'm mentioning Ventress is because if you look at the Seven Sisters fight with Ahsoka, even though she is the only Inquisitor to primarily use both blades, she primarily fights using one hand and she continues to use more fencing or dueling motions that are seen in Form 2. I'm currently under the impression that the Inquisitors serve under Darth Vader. It is possible that Vader is responsible for their training. The thing is that Anakin Skywalker used Form 5. Because of the enhanced strength due to his cybernetic limbs 
Anakin as Vader is able to fight with a lightsaber with one hand. In the movies, Vader is seen doing a lot of fencing motions to show how he has adapted elements of Form 2 into Form 5. But in the duel against Kanan and Ezra, I saw primarily Form 5, where Vader simply overpowered Kanan. I will admit that it is completely possible that the Grand Inquisitor mastered Form 2 from studying hours and hours of lightsaber combat from the Jedi Temple archives. The Grand Inquisitor says it himself that he is such a student of lightsaber combat that he can tell who studied under what master just from watching them fight. I just find it too much of a coincidence that the Grand Inquisitor and the Seventh Sister both appear to favor Form 2. The same can be said for Asajj Ventress, as she was trained by Count Dooku. Notice that I've not mentioned the fifth brother. That's because he appears to favor a style focused more on strength and brute force, which is highlighted by Form 5. My point is that of the three Inquisitors that we have seen thus far, based on their fighting styles, it appears unlikely that they were previously guards at the Jedi Temple. Later on in Star Wars Rebels, we will see the fighting style used by Force users who weld a lightsaber pike, but I don't think it'll look like the fighting style we've seen thus far from the Inquisitors. So that's what I have. Based on the fighting styles, I think that the Grand Inquisitor was being trained by Count Dooku near the conclusion of the Clone Wars. Perhaps it was part of Palpatine's plan to begin the Inquisitorius just like he began construction of the Death Star towards the end of the Clone Wars. Now I'm not saying this is what happened with 100% assurance. I'm only speculating based on the evidence that I have found. I'm also not saying that Dash's video is wrong. Like I said, this is completely based on analyzing the fighting styles and looking at the storyboard episodes on Utapau that were never fully completed. So with all that said, I'd like to hear from you. Filoni says that we saw the Grand Inquisitor during the Clone Wars. Who do you think he is? Do you think he may have been a temple guard, or do you agree with the case I presented here, that the Grand Inquisitor was someone already being trained by Count Dooku on Utapau? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. If this is your first time seeing Urban Acolyte TV, go ahead and subscribe so that you can be informed when I post new videos. And if you haven't seen them already, you can check out these other videos that I did on Star Wars Rebels. In this one, I address the fan theory that Supreme Leader Snoke is one of the temple guards that we'll see in an upcoming episode of Star Wars Rebels. In this other video, I speculate on the season finale. It's called Twilight of the Apprentice. Do you think that it might be the end for Ahsoka, who was referred to as Anakin Skywalker's apprentice? Also, I'm about to begin a new series where I will review the Star Wars Rebels episodes. I'll be starting from the very first episode, so keep checking back for when I get those posted. Well, that's all I've got for now. And remember that I love telling you guys all about Star Wars so that it might change your life the same way it's changed mine. Well, y'all keep on breathing and may the force be with you. Bye. You want to click subscribe. You want to share this video with your friends.